Congratulations on finishing grad school, what a huge accomplishment. Today I want to share with you my experience of moving from a master's in artificial intelligence to software engineering, how I made the decision to leave academia, why I chose software engineering and not data science, and what it was like to move into the industry. So keep watching and subscribe for more videos for new graduates. Hi, I'm Yulia Eskin, a Silicon Valley tech lead and a career coach for software engineers. This is the right channel for you if you're a software engineer who wants to get promoted become a tech lead, or just be a better engineer. Finishing graduate school is such a huge celebration and accomplishment, but it can also be a period of a lot of anxiety because it raises the question of what's next. To stay in academia, continue to a PhD and build a career as a researcher and academic, or to move to the industry and navigate the different roles between software engineering, data science, research scientists, or even product roles. So what's next and how do you decide? I totally know how it feels because I had gone through this transition as well and that is what I want to talk to you today, so keep watching. So how did I make the decision to leave academia and not pursue an academic career? Before graduate school, I actually always intended to continue to a PhD and to build a career as a professor. I honestly didn't even entertain any other options and definitely didn't know that my path will lead me to become a software engineer and a tech lead and where I am today as a career coach and you can watch all about it in this video above. But while doing my masters I actually learned a lot about what I like, what I don't like and what it really means to work in academia. I think we really tend to idealize the things that we don't know and I definitely had a lot of idealizations about what it would be like to be a researcher and an academic. After my masters I was also employed for two years as a researcher so first I want to share with you some of the realizations I made about what it would be like to work as a researcher and why I ended up deciding not to go forward with it. So one of the things that I really enjoyed about being in grad school and then working in research is that I was surrounded by really smart and intellectual people. One of my favorite things was that people could get into a conversation about any topic at any hour of the day and it was a fascinating intellectual conversation and I really identified with it. But as I started to actually do research first as a graduate student and then as a researcher I actually realized that research itself was a pretty isolating and lonely work. From my experience I wasn't actually collaborating with anybody else, I was working on it completely on my own and that was actually one of the biggest realizations that as I started grad school I thought of myself that I'm an introvert so I would really enjoy working on things on my own but I actually realized it was the opposite. I realized that I actually wanted to be part of a team, that working with other people would give me inspiration, motivation and would make me a lot more productive than I was working on my own. The other thing is lack of structure and lack of rewards and deadlines. I mean yes you have paper deadlines but that's pretty much it. Usually when you work in research you work on long-term projects, very long-term initiatives that can even take decades. There isn't any real deadline like we need to ship this in a year or half a year. In that environment I wasn't really performing my best. I wasn't very productive and it was really playing with my mental health. And what I mean by that is the lack of structure made it really easy for me either to procrastinate or to work really late. At the same time there were days where I was feeling like what I was doing was really important and groundbreaking and pushing the field forward but most of the time I was feeling like my work is just another paper in a sea of papers out there and at the end of the day that it wouldn't really matter. What I was really missing is seeing the impact of my work on real customers and that was one of the biggest realizations for me that I really wanted to be building technology that would fall into people's hands and make a difference in their lives and even though I have so much respect for research and I think it has a really important function in our society I just felt like I wasn't the right person for it. And it wasn't easy coming to all of these realizations. I began to shift the direction of my career. With these realizations I started thinking okay so what's next for me? And that's when a lot of fears started kicking in. I started worrying that my environment will reject me and what I mean by that is that I was surrounded by people who were researchers and academics, people who were doing their PhDs and I started to feel like wait I'm not one of them anymore. I am planning to leave and I was sort of feeling like they will see me leaving as stepping down and I think this is kind of a common sentiment in academia the people who go to the industry are stepping down at least that was my experience and I started really comparing myself to people who stayed in research and started feeling a lot of imposter syndrome and just feeling like did it mean that I wasn't good enough to stay and continue to PhD that I didn't have what it takes but to be honest 
what really helped me is to zoom out of it and really realize that I don't need to try to fit myself into an environment that I just don't really want to be in. Not that there's anything horrible about this environment, but it's just not the environment that makes me happy. And that was one of the biggest growth lessons in my life, actually, that I shouldn't try to force myself to fit an environment that I didn't really want to be part of, and that instead I need to go and find the environment that's a good match to what makes me happy, to what makes me productive, and the place where I want to build my career and my success. And I actually also had a few fears about going into software engineering. Now that I realized that I no longer wanted to be a researcher, I was thinking, will I fit in as a software engineer? I'm coming from a research background. What do I know about software engineering? And honestly, I didn't know much because I didn't take any of those classes. And so at first I thought, well, if I go to a data science role, I don't have a PhD in computer vision. Does that mean that I wouldn't be good enough for a data science role? I didn't really know what it was like. And that's where all of these fears started kicking in. And I definitely I want to emphasize the identity piece because looking back I actually realized that is probably what was going on with me the most and that was one of the reasons for a lot of this resistance and fear of changing and leaving where I was and trying something new. I think this happens a lot to us in life that we get really associated with our career identity and in that case it was being an academic. It becomes who we are but really who we are is a lot more than that. It's a lot more open than that. And one thing I've learned in my life by going through multiple career transitions, because this was only my first one, is that you never lose that identity, you just add to it. And you can be more than one thing. I know it sounds really trivial, but it took me many years to realize that I can give myself permission to explore so much more beyond the path that I was on. So now I want to share with you why did I end up choosing software engineering and not data science? I mean, data science would seem as a natural choice if I had a master's in artificial intelligence, including research experience, right? And I can definitely tell you that I didn't plan on going to software engineering. I actually thought about going into data science and I did start by looking at data science roles and I even interviewed for a couple. But when I did look at data science positions, I I just felt a pit in my stomach and I can't quite describe it but I just felt like I was going to pigeonhole myself even more into artificial intelligence which I've already been doing for years and I just really felt like it wouldn't meet all the criteria that I had that I didn't like in research and I just realized that data science roles would be too similar to what I was doing and that is exactly what I was trying to get away from so then I started thinking about software engineering and I realized at first that I didn't know a lot about about it, but what really appealed to me about software engineering is that it would give me a really good foundation from which I could grow in my career. Software engineering has so many different roles such as front-end and back-end and data engineering and SRE and platform. There's just so much variety there and I realized that software engineering would give me the kind of impact that I really wanted to have and also it would be a great jumping point for me to other career paths such as engineering management, product roles, tech leadership and so forth. So that's really why I ended up wanting to be in software engineering and now data science with the major reasons is that I just felt like I didn't want to be doing research anymore and I didn't really want to be behind the scenes. It was kind of an interesting realization for me because until that point I never really saw myself as a leader or as somebody extroverted or I thought that I had to be extroverted to work directly with the product or directly with customers and that is really not the case. And so looking back I'm really happy that I made that choice because I was listening to my curiosity and that is my biggest tip for you follow what gets you excited, follow what gets you passionate. And for me, that was that indication that looking through these positions in data science just wasn't getting me excited. I just felt like I was going to go even deeper into a path that I didn't really want to be on. So that was really the deciding factor for me. And I'm really happy that I ended up in software engineering. So if you're just graduating from your master's or PhD and you want to transition into the industry, into software engineering, check out my website below on how I can support you as a career coach to help you navigate those first six months in your job. So what was it like to actually transition into software engineering? I want to talk about a couple different things here. The work itself, timeliness, collaboration, flexibility, 
and identity. So from the work perspective, it was actually quite interesting because I was afraid that it would be so different in research and that the problems would be trivial and also not very interesting or engaging. But that is not the case. It's not less engaging or less challenging. It's just different. The problems you work on in software engineering are more related to the product you're building. There was actually a lot for me to learn that was very interesting in terms of system architecture, code design, processes that I needed to understand and develop. And it was just very different than what research is like. Yes, the problems you're solving are much smaller in scope, but it's also interesting because it makes them much more solvable. You're looking at problems that have more constraints because they're coming from the customer or from the product managers. And you also have the constraint of time. In the sense, you're learning to make a lot of compromises and trade-offs. And it actually creates a very engaging experience because you need to iterate a lot. You need to try different solutions it's so different than in research where you're solving essentially one big abstract problem and you have to solve it to perfection there's no shortcuts there's no compromises there's no simplifying assumptions in the industry it's very different and i actually found that a great match for me because I wanted to solve problems like that and actually deliver a product to people and see the impact that it made. The other interesting transition is learning flexibility. I think the nature of the work in research is you're working on one large topic or problem for decades and you sort of have to solve it to perfection. But in the industry, people are not looking for perfections. They're looking for results. So it's a very different approach in how you're thinking and how you're solving problems. And at first it was a little bit hard for me because because I sort of wanted to solve everything in a very rigorous way and make sure that every requirement was met and wasn't really thinking about where can we find trade-offs, where can we find compromise. But I learned quickly in my career as a software engineer that there are multiple parties in the discussions. There's product managers, there's software engineers, there's UX designers, and so all of these parties come together to decide on the best product to build. And even if you start from one set of requirements, these requirements are dynamic to some extent, but you have the power to actually shape what you're building. You're not simply given a problem and told to go and solve it. And I found that power very rewarding and very empowering that I actually had a say on what we were building and how we were building it and for whom. So it was really great to learn more flexibility in how I solve problems because I had more power and I realized that there's always trade-offs to be made, both from the technical complexity and the user experience. And it was up to me and the team to decide where we wanted to fall in that spectrum. The next thing I wanna talk about is collaboration. Coming from research, as I said, I worked a lot in isolation and I just didn't have anybody to collaborate with. I just worked on my own project. The transition into the industry really showed me how collaboration is important. When you work as a software engineer, you're always part of a team. You're not working on your own. And that means that you need to think about, is your work actually blocking other people? Is somebody waiting for you? What are the deadlines? Are you blocking the team by not asking enough questions? So this was a very interesting realization to me that my work was really affecting people on my team and their work was affecting me. And that in some sense, we were one unit and I couldn't just disconnect from them. At the same time, the work you're doing as a software engineer the code you're writing it's not written in a vacuum it's actually part of a bigger system not only in your team but in the company and so all of that really started to teach me how much collaboration was such an essential part of software engineering and that was probably one of the biggest transition points because until that point I didn't really feel comfortable asking people for their opinion on my work, being very transparent about what I was doing, asking people for help or helping them. But this is a really key thing in software engineering and I'm really happy that I saw early on how valuable collaboration is. However, I have to say the one thing that I think being in research really helped me with is my ability to be inquisitive and ask a lot of questions. I definitely still see till this day that me having that academic mindset means that I really try to think through requirements and through what I'm building in this bigger picture view in a holistic way to try to understand much more deeply what I'm actually solving. And that is something I have to say that I think people who come from graduate school are better at than people who are not. Part of it is also personality, 
but I definitely think that that was a big bonus that helped me in my career. From the timeliness perspective, I have to say that was probably where I failed the most. I was not used to working in a fast-paced environment. Working on my own in research meant that I always got to set my own hours and nobody was affected by it. So when I started getting my first assignments, I just felt like I had all the time in the world to solve them and it was really unusual for me when I got little hints from my tech lead and from my manager that like, Yulia, we're waiting on this. We need you to be done with this. It was kind of a funny experience, but I remember this realization like, oh, there's like actual deadlines here. And that was a learning experience for me. I mean, I quickly learned that I need to hand in my assignments within the sprint and that there's an expectation that I would do multiple tickets in a sprint. And that was a really big difference from working in research. And the last thing I want to talk about in terms of this transition is the change to my identity. Now that I'm older and I can look back at my career path, I've done several career transitions already, but that was probably one of my first ones. And I think it was really hard for me to disconnect from the identity of being a computer scientist, a researcher, an academic, especially since that's the career path that I thought I will be on for a very long time. And so I remember that even when I got my title, a software engineer, when people would refer to me as an engineer, it would sting a little bit. I was thinking in my head, no, I'm not. I'm a computer scientist. I'm not an engineer. And I learned one of the biggest lessons is that I didn't lose who I was. I'm allowed to change. I'm allowed to open myself up for new career directions. And I'm very happy that I ended up in software engineering. It was definitely the right decision for me. So if you're in a transition point in your life right now, I really hope that this video was helpful for you. And please leave me a comment and say, what was helpful to you about this video? What is a transition that you're going through? And please check out my website below on how I can support you as a career coach, helping you transition into software engineering and navigate your first six months in tech. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.